Hello and welcome everyone to the review of meta decks that players brought to top 16 qualifiers this month in hopes of getting to the mid-season tournament since this is the last uh, competitive uh, season uh, and year of Gwent there is not much time left for them for that so let's see what decks were popular what factions were present and what was the winning lineup Всем привет! Сегодня смотрим деки топ-16 квалификации, которые Камс и Спеллинг Би прошли на сезон, турнир, который будет проходить летом. Поздравляем! Посмотрим, что, какие фракции были популярными и что у победителей за лайн лайнапы. And we are starting with Syndicate. Syndicate was almost everywhere. And ever since Blood Money Leader Change happened... Uh, Bounty Golden Necker is a staple. Some people tried playing Devotion previously, but this time around, if it was Blood Money, I think everyone brought Golden Necker. So a lot of common cards there. Royal Decree, Vivaldi Bank for tutoring, Golden Necker for tutoring three cards. Uh, so you want two locations, candle or two artifacts. Uh, Hideout and Candle, you want cards that synergize with uh, bounties and poisons uh, to ki kill units, to grow your Ignatius Hail. You probably have seen this in action, you probably know what it does. Uh, the only configurations of this deck is like spots like uh, Roach, uh, Freak Show, Roland, Drill, those can be replaced if you want Unicorn Chironex combo, you can run that. You can omit Freak Show, you can put uh, other crimes, the Hysteria I think is the one missing here that also synergizes with Bounty, but overall spread your poisons, poison opponent in round 3, Sirinova is there to, to act as a carryover, grow your Ignatius for round 3 as well, and collect them Bounties. But that was not the sole uh, Syndicate uh, deck present. There is also a St. Gregory Justicar here. This is uh, more, more of a throwback deck because it plays King of Beggars, because it plays uh, things like Jacques, Sigi, uh, Hamelfart, so the cards that uh, are not going into your bounty deck and specifically do not go into the Golden Necker decks because of the provision cost. Uh, an interesting inclusion of Morales to tribute and destroy something instead of dealing damage, so Toll Punish present. People consider that this is not, a, it's not only Toll Punish, it's also like something to erase your opponent's uh, unit from the board. Other than that, this is a Firesworn package that goes white, uh, Flamer, uh, Keeper of the Flame, he's here to boost everything in a row. So what this uh, Jessicar does? Well, it transforms into his second uh, form after you won a round, and then on deploy it damages enemy unit by the number of Firesworn cards on this row. That's why we spawn uh, with... Uh, with all the fire sworn cards and fill one row and then on V2 it damages an uh, enemy unit on Berserk 1 boosts all allied units by one and damages all the enemy units by one considering there is a swarm deck that is being popular also check out highlights if you have, uh, haven't seen it the uh, Rafa Swarm from Truski on this channel um, it's a pretty good uh, meta call to bring this to the tournament. Sadly, player with this lineup didn't qualify, so Bounty was uh, in both Kamsis and uh, Spelling Beast lists, uh, lineups, and they made it. Next one is uh, Squirtle. That we're moving on, so let's summarize. Syndicate, present, of the books, not that popular, blood money everywhere. So. If you want a meta deck for the ladder climb, take blood money, learn how to play it, learn how to count your coins to not over profit, uh, and you will be fine. Syndicate comes to spelling be Oba Prince Bounty, Nagrad za Golovo Sabrali, Prahotku na Turnir Poluchile. Grisha, Nismok, to was dealt, Ksajelenio, 
игрок, который дошел до финала нижней сетки, не смог э, по поучаствовать в финале, так что у Гриши был шанс, но не срослось. Moving on. Guerrilla Tactics and Precision Strike, as you see, were present for Squirtel. Squirtel is still sticking to Harmony, even after the big boost to Elves. Haste, Telianin, not the most popular cards with players on this tournament. Harmony with Mysteries of Lockfane, Dina, Saskia, yes please, they love that. Although, as you see, Seamless is added here. And double backup plan is there as well. The backup plan is uh, the new card from Clue and Dagger expansion. Damages uh, last unit played by your opponent by two and creates an elf. So potentially you get with seamless two backup plans that can kill a four point immune unit like Saskia or uh, Erland. If you are into that, if your opponent didn't uh, hand buff uh, Erland playing around uh, backup plan. And you can find more damage with uh, Bombers, with uh, other elves that deal damage on deploy. So you can even like count on killing an 8 point unit with it. 4, four damage from 2 backup plans and then 2 elves that deal 3-2 damage. Uh, you can do do it. Plus, elves have multiple tags, being soldiers, bandits. So, if your scenario is activated, that's a great addition. Other than that, this is more or less uh, what we've seen in the meta for months now. There is Saskia for your thinning and Swarm on the board with categories Dana, who is being either utilized as a Carry over play in round one. If your opponent in the mirror, you are on blue coin. Drop Dana tries to answer it. Every turn they do not kill it. You are getting the advantage of uh, hand buff. If they develop their Dana and you are still uh, uh, you are starting to kill theirs, well, you do it faster than do they do. So that's pretty damn good. Uh, other configuration of this deck is, uh, well, Ichoric Wax. It's less prevalent in the meta on ladder now, but uh, you can still play it and thin your opponent's huge go gold. Remember that uh, St. Gregory Justicar? Yeah, that, that one can be thinned out of the deck if uh, your opponent wasn't talented in finding it. Beyond that, well, there is a Brehan instead of Seamless uh, and Quack, so you just shift a couple of provisions. Apparently, Lake Guardian Das Aspect is a unicorn here as well, but uh, we need those artifacts in Gwent. So yeah, a lot of tags for your Harmony, for your Saskia to work. Uh, you know how Harmony works. What was the alternative? I think only one player brought this, uh, but... Uh, Managed to get to the semi-final of lower bracket, if I'm not mistaken. So, elves, but with precision strike. So, controller version with epidemic, with backup plants, offerings for carryover on those broccoli. Broccoli on sentinels. Uh, you can hand buff those, so acts as a carryover on a leader. You can also thin it out. Telianin is here. And she doesn't have too many targets for her ability of playing an elf with deploy. You only have Seamless, Vanadine, and uh, well, this is not with deploy. You get more deploy elves from backup plants. Basically, this is also not a deploy elf. So, a consistent way to play elves can also hide, uh, can also, if you don't pay attention, you can pull your seamless early, which you don't want to do. But uh, yeah, an interesting deck that uh, builds on the older precision strike decks with, uh, with Gort finisher as well. But uh, who needs a Gort tall finisher when you can go seamless into like six waylays, eight waylays? So an interesting. Uh, Decision to bring this over uh, Harmony also has uh, a few poisons 
here a double whisperer plus i think there is a dryad ranger who disguises it uh, herself as uh, gort at the moment uh links uh, will be in the channel description so this is squirtel this is squirtel gorilla tactics is prevalent with shiru but precision strike was tried out moving on Skellige. Skellige with Earth Sign Ritual being present in two players lineup if I'm not mistaken. What does it try to do? It tries to play Sigvald and Knut with Melusine. So this is not a rain deck. Uh, you would have expected rain to be present but people were trying to avoid it. And yeah there is a Svalblood card that uh, goes pretty well against any swarm decks and if you are not running into this card on ladder in your sign ritual you're still seeing it from magic compass magic compass is a pretty good tool for pirates so that was uh, self wound with restore with melusine with uh, Sigrifa right to bring out uh, Melusine in round 3 that was grown or like Knut or Sigvald, whatever you used. Damage uh, your own units. Uh, if opponent swarms, land a huge swole blood. I wonder why is nobody playing uh, what's his uh, dagger, right? Somebody needs to create a cheese deck with that card as well, but you don't need. Sigvold is uh, good enough of a card. Alternative to that, and one of the main staples of uh, competitive Gwent in the like, past six months by now, is Onslaught. Golden Necker Pirates with Magic Compass. They got their unicorns for thinning, they got their commander's horn. If you haven't followed Gwent in a while, you might be surprised at this card scene play. But yeah, Commander's Horn was uh, changed a bit. Now can play for like 14 points instead of uh, just 10. So not bad inclusion, especially in a deck that doesn't mind running an extra special. A lot of damage, erase your opponent's side of the board. You can rebuild it. You Maybe you don't want Harpier Lemons on ladder. Although it's pretty powerful against uh, Kikimor, Hive Mind, it's pretty good against uh, Compass, and well, sometimes you can clean your graveyard as well if you are afraid that Nilfgaard gonna steal something. So this is Pirates, run COC, they threw City Nova from the deck. Nova is not being run, just replaced with... Uh, Whatever 8-9 provision card there is also eliminates the risk of uh, accidentally curse of uh, playing Curse of Corruption onto your city. Good tempo. Surprisingly, the deck that erases your opponent's side of the board puts out like 50 points on the board consistently, unless we are talking about Mirror where everything dies. Also for Mirrors, once again, Magic Compass is a very good flexible card. You can just avoid playing points play everything into the damage and then just finish with Sigvold as well. So, this is Skellige. Skoyatel we посмотрели. Skellige we посмотрели. В основном Шеру с гармошкой играется, но был один uh, line-up, uh, в котором принесли точный удар. Точный удар с эльфами. И у Skellige пираты повсюду, но немного хоть с Вальблода пары игроков принесли. Um, interesting point, both people who qualified, Kams and uh, Spelling Bee, avoided Skellige in their lineups. They brought monsters instead, with uh, Spelling Bee bringing Overwhelming Hunger and Kams bringing Devotion White Frost. But the most interesting deck of this month in Gwent is Arahas War. The Trasky built a beautiful Witch's Sabbath deck that, uh, well, You'd expect Witch's Sabbath and Arachas Queen going into the same deck and there it is, Arachas Queen, what are you playing it on? Well, you can do that on Defender if you are afraid, but either is a card reborn from Ashes now doing something different. It's basically a red Skellige ship that damages your opponent's unit, but this is not roll locked and it also has uh, 
ability to gain cha charges, charges to sh uh, spawn drones to feed your Kikimur Stalker. So where is that card? And what does it do? Kikimur Stalker is a powerful tool that is being used as a self-sufficient control uh, component that can buff itself by eating drones on your side of the board and damaging enemy units by one so you want to grow it to like five six and then in combination with your leader has form which brings out more drones to the board with your organics and leader passive and either just shoot line up uh, everything to one to eat with your glusty or alternatively just kill it off so Predator keyword on this card is, uh, where is it? Ability can be, uh, can only target units with power lower than its own. So it cannot kill three if Kikimor Star Stalker is three point unit itself, but you can eat something, one of the drones. And if you have enough charges, just offload them after that. And the Hive Mind is also a new card, shows you, you don't need to run Kikimor units, all of them, all four bronzes in your deck, you can just use it and it shows you, so you're picking the order. Now, the Frost. Finally, I can justify running this uh, mod that shows a card border from uh, Rogue Mage. Frost with Eridin and Oberon and all that shebang. Every wild hunt card goes into this deck. It's a devotion one that just grows Karantir Golden Child out of proportions and relies on that. Sadly, Dwim Viandres Tirnalea interaction was uh, fixed like six, eight months ago in Gwent. And never since that, the Vimvandra was a problem in the game. Wink, wink. Moving on to NR later, you'll see that. The comeback is real. But yeah, Frost Monsters is a pretty great tool. A deck to get yourself a win. It usually like deals pretty well in a long round since you just spam Frost, but also has a short round potential with Karantir if you manage to like carry over his value if it's at like 20 points you can drop it it has Oberon and uh, Oberon into like Wild Hunt ri uh, Riders in round 3 so uh, first round you also don't struggle with Winter Queen and uh, Ancient Foglet if necessary so you just need to find your cards, find your aristocrats, stick something to the board like Foglet or Aristocrat and keep growing. Navigator also combines quite nicely with Frost in the rounds where you cannot uh, get a full value out of it. Sadly Frost didn't get something like uh, Riorgan in Rain decks. Moving to the next one, it's Deathwish. I'm not gonna stay on this for long. Dagon Promised is a card from the previous expansion. It still runs all the Deathwish units uh, like Arachas Queen and Deathlove and relies on Succubus for points. Succubi being uh, cycled through the graveyard is uh, what this deck does the best. Even if the round is short with Kran eating like two of them, it's a lot of points. It's scary, but uh, wasn't that popular. I don't think uh, many people brought White Frost or relied only on White Frost or Hunger. It was split and then some people brought uh, Swarm. Um, I mentioned what winners brought as well. Now look at those Nilfgaard and Tenar decks. A lot of uh, stuff to cover. We're probably gonna just jump. You can look at the decks on your own. This is just a small review. Tenar was popular, but what people didn't bring to the turn? Drakenborg, the card that uh, synergizes very well with Bimvi Andres. Check. Present. So the idea here is you grow and hand buff your... Uh, do, 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 wait, this is not exactly that. Okay, forget about it. Or am I tripping? 
did I... So yeah, this is the reverse deck with Drakenborg. It's a bit different because... Uh, well, you can hand buff something, but you cannot hand buff... Uh, Sigi, uh, because he's not there. This is not replaced. So, Drakenborg, but without the full on abuse. It still um, summons a unit from your deck. Doesn't have to be a boosted unit. And then with... Uh, well, it has, but it doesn't. So, forget about that. I was in the other mind frame here. And this is, a, this is a deck that relies on the rivers mostly, and it has uh, Dwims uh, as well for the Mashed Ruffle. And I guess it doesn't play Garrison, so... My bad? Sorta? Kinda? I was expecting like full-on Drakenborg, maybe there was one. Uh, and I might have ju jumped uh, in time. So yeah, this is another build for rivers. Uh, River Hunter Sadar. It either run to spawn even more of them, Masha Truffle and Garrison. So this this is the proper uh, River Hunter deck. So I got my decks kind of mixed, but uh, that Drakenborg deck was also present in this qualis. Uh, so. If you are interested in, to, in something spicy and want to figure out what that was about, you're more than welcomed. Uh, so this is mobilization with rivers. Then we had uh, Priestess deck. I think that's, uh, yeah, Magpie brought this one. So Traveling Priestess, even after nerf, is still a quite, quite a good deck. Although Nilfgaard got that uh, clock package, so you're... Consistency might be interrupted not by uh, meal now with Trihorn and Vilgefortz, but by actual clock that makes your uh, Vernon Rush rest reliable. Next we see Shoop Muta Generator. Highlight of this uh, deck was made multiple times on this channel. So, if you are a follower, you probably seen this deck in action. If you are not a follower, this is your time. Go and click and like and subscribe. You know what, what to do on YouTube. And the last deck is a Madoc, militarily. So, this was also present in the past qualifiers it in Trusky or Lerio over bringing this. So, idea is you do the militarily things, but at the same time you play like five, four bombs with Madoc and Sappers, so it helps you to draw the cards and rotate and maybe get more military value out of that and more consistency because you'll find your uh, important goals. So that's on the spicier side of the decks. Uh, Drakenborg and this was brought only by one person. And then the winner of uh, top bracket camps brought old school knights so another deck that is uh, like playable for months but less popular nowadays uh, he decided that it makes sense for his lineup bringing this and frost together with uh, bounty and what was it eh, now i forget uh, guerrilla tactics uh, how many so no Nilfgaard, no Skellige, less control, just slam points. Uh, it's a viable strategy, as we see. And then... Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard, it's gonna be rent-free. Rent-free soldiers do not deserve more than 3 seconds on it. Play soldiers, spotters, Nausicaa uh, sergeants. Then buff everything with 3s and have a lot of play points from rent-free. That's my honest review of the deck. Cultists, Cultists deserve more time, but they've been covered already. One of the greediest decks that wants to go according to plan, play Deacon's round one, make everything Cultist, uh, then play your scenario round one or round two, depends on how your opponent is resisting and then get mad boosts uh, for your cultists. 
uh, but no new cards in those. Uh, we'll move to assimilate uh, in Slave Six. That I'm very happy to see Tourney Shelmar uh, being present. Nice, all right in the mirror for six provisions, playing for eleven as a. Uh, Killing one assimilate unit usually, but uh, against harmony, against uh, pirates, you can usually put out, especially with Anna being syn uh, like synergistic with uh, something like pincer maneuver, it also creates more units on the board. Don't kill mirrors with this because that one is clown fiesta. So more enslaves. Uh, this one is worth Angulim. Angulim was uh, changed a bit now as well. It doesn't break now uh, nowadays. Plays for 9, for 11 at the very least. And Slave is being run uh, with Shoop apparently as well. This was uh, something I've seen in the lineups, but I didn't pay much attention to. Uh, so, Shoop Radea with a bunch of tactics still. We can count 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's only enslave five, if I'm not mistaken. Place unicorns as well. Mm, why not? But uh, yeah, I haven't really seen it uh, utilized properly on ladder. So those are enslaves. Then we have one imprisonment. Uh, player who decided that uh, why do you need a Stefan Skellen and just brought and simulate with control leader and the last one uh, is Anna that's not from the qualifiers if I'm not mistaken so that's the meta every faction present Neil got with uh, abysmal win rate if I'm not mistaken that's going from uh, Lerio's stats Arachas Swarm didn't perform too well if I'm not mistaken as well people fallen out, out uh, other than Sandvanter I don't think anyone progressed far enough with it although maybe they just queued into one another and that might have been also the case Neil got being all over the place same goes for NR shows that there are multiple decks uh, Araha Swarm is clear winner in terms of like what uh, new expansion cards made it into the tournament and I'm gonna be finishing here thanks for watching I tried to make it as fast as possible but even with that since uh, Neil got and Anar had a bunch of decks I kind of wanted to show it to you and maybe mention something about each of the decks you can find the links in the video description. I'll appreciate if you leave a comment uh, with how to make it faster or better, the, those meta reviews. It's not really a proper meta review of the ladder decks. It's what people brought specifically for this tournament. So you might see that some decks like your maybe Gedenade deck was omitted or Siege wasn't showcased. Yeah, this is only based on the tournament. Всем спасибо, что смотрели. Где-то пытался добавлять комментарии. К сожалению, это будет слишком затянуто. А два раза писать один и тот же видос тоже тяжело. А деки в описании. Спасибо, что смотрите. Оставляйте комментарии. Подписывайтесь, если еще не подписались. И до следующего раза. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.